Welcome to the MD Edge Daily News for Tuesday, June 26th. I'm Nick Andrews. And I'm Mary Ellen Schneider. Today, expecting parents should visit a pediatrician during the first trimester of pregnancy. Also today, the Trump administration proposes changes to the Department of Health and Human Services and the FDA. Ever since continuous glucose monitoring is safe and accurate for children. But we begin today with the first ever approval of a drug that contains an active ingredient derived from marijuana. The FDA approved cannabidiol oral solution for the treatment of two rare pediatric seizure disorders, lennox gusteau syndrome and Dravet syndrome. The approval falls in line with the unanimous recommendations of an FDA advisory panel to approve cannabidiol oral solution. FDA Commissioner Dr. Scott Gottlieb says that this product approval demonstrates that advancing sound scientific research to investigate ingredients derived from marijuana can lead to important therapies. The FDA Peripheral Central Nervous System Drugs Advisory Committee's earlier positive recommendation was based on three randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled clinical trials. These trials showed a 50% reduction of drop seizure frequency in more than 40% of patients with lennox gusteau syndrome and a 39% decrease in convulsive seizure frequency for trial participants with Dravet syndrome. A total of 516 patients with one of the two seizure disorders participated in the clinical trials. Dr. Billy Dunn is the director of the Division of Neurology Products in the FDA Center for Drug Evaluation and Research. Dr. Dunn notes that this provides another option for patients with Lennox Gusteau, but is the first ever approval of a drug specifically for patients with Dravet syndrome. The FDA's actions against companies distributing unapproved products that contain cannabidiol and making unproven claims will continue. From Family Practice News, all expecting parents should visit a pediatrician during the first trimester to establish a relationship. This advice comes from the American Academy of Pediatrics in the form of an updated clinical report that will be available in the July edition of Pediatrics. The report says that a comprehensive visit gives pediatricians the opportunity to meet four objectives. First, build a trusting relationship. Second, gather information about family history. Third, give advice and guidance on infant care and safety. And fourth, identify risk factors for psychosocial issues such as perinatal depression. The prenatal visit also allows families and clinicians to learn whether their philosophies align, and it gives pediatricians the opportunity to dive deeper into family history, such as past pregnancies and chronic medical conditions. The report suggests scheduling the visit when an expecting parent is seeking information about insurance, practice hours, and if a practice is accepting new patients. It also advises clinicians to encourage same-sex parents parents expecting via a surrogate, and parents who are adopting to schedule a prenatal visit to identify concerns. Dr. Arthur Lavin of Harvard Medical School says that the visit is about laying a foundation for a trusting, supportive relationship between the family and their pediatrician who will work together for the next 18 plus years. The Trump administration seeks to reorganize several federal agencies as part of a sweeping reform proposal. The proposal states that government in the 21st century is fundamentally a services business and modern information technology should be at the heart of the U.S. delivery model instead of aligned to the stovepipe organization constructs of the 20th century. Under the proposal, The Department of Health and Human Services would be rebranded as the Department of Health and Public Welfare. The department would now include the U.S. Department of Agriculture, including the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program and the Special Supplementation Nutrition Program for women, infants, and children. Food oversight functions would shift from the FDA to the USDA, and the FDA would be rebranded as the Federal Drug Administration, removing food from the title. The rebranded FDA would focus on drugs, devices, biologics, tobacco, dietary supplements, and cosmetics. 
The administration also proposes a Council on Public Assistance that would be comprised of all federal agencies that administer public benefits. The proposal would also restructure the National Institutes of Health with a focus on efficiency, though no details were provided. You can read the full proposal by clicking the link in the description. And finally today, the Eversense Continuous Glucose Monitoring System provides safe, durable, and accurate monitoring in pediatric diabetes. This is according to the results of a prospective single-arm study of 30 children and 6 adults. The Eversense system was recently approved by the FDA for use in adults with diabetes. In the current study, children with an average age of 14 years had the monitor inserted for 180 days. The researchers reported the mean absolute relative difference between the sensor and the true laboratory glucose levels at the annual scientific sessions of the American Diabetes Association. Dr. Ronnie Aronson is the founder and chief medical officer of LMC Diabetes and Endocrinology in Ontario, Canada. Dr. Aronson says that anything under 10% is considered good. The Eversense was 9.4% throughout the study. Dr. Aronson spoke with MD Edge at the ADA meeting. And in terms of likability, we had very high ratings ranging from 78 to 90% on items like, did you like having an implanted sensor? Did you like having on-body vibratory alerts? In just about every aspect, uh, they actually enjoyed and, and would have continued. And that concludes this edition of the MD Edge Daily News. You can find links to these stories in the podcast description. I'm Mary Ellen Schneider. And I'm Nick Andrews. You can subscribe to the Daily News and make us a part of your routine wherever podcasts are found.